And we'll now uh, dive deeper into the uh, yeah trust in the era of AI uh, issue. I am very pleased that I have Charlotte Holloway with me today. She is uh, Head of Government Relations in Europe, Middle East and Africa at uh, Zoom. Uh, Charlotte, thank you so much for taking uh, the time. It is a great pleasure and um, yeah, let's maybe dive right into it because uh, we have a lot of topics I, I want to cover with you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you, you suggested that we talk about trust in the era of AI. So maybe first of all, what does trust mean for you? And uh, how is AI changing how Zoom is perceived as a, as a company with all the different services and products? Yeah, it's a great question. And first of all, I must say thank you so much to Bitcom for holding this, uh, what I think is a really important um, privacy conference and the annual events. Uh, that we see not just in uh, Germany, but right across Europe and, and the wider region. So it's a really important contribution to the debate. And Zoom is delighted to be speaking this year again, and indeed to be the platform today that you're using for your virtual day as well. So thank you ever so much. Look, AI is, as we know, everywhere at the moment. It seems like you can't be in any type of policy debate, whether it's in the tech sector or beyond, without thinking about AI and its privacy consequences. And you know, when we are here at Zoom, um, people know us, we're a company about 11, 12 years old, and we steadily over recent times have been thinking more and more about how we embed artificial intelligence into um, the Zoom platform experience, which yes, is, is meetings, but it's also webinar as we're seeing today. It's also many other um, fun parts of functionality on our platform. Um, and we are recently doing a lot of work on our Zoom AI companion product as well. So trust has always been really core to us. We've had a really interesting journey as a company where we were catapulted into widespread use and, and, and we kind of approached that with, with a great deal of humility um, during 2020 and with COVID. And for us, getting that trust of our users um, that we're safe, that sec we're secure, we're easy to use, um, that we have those instincts around privacy as part of our DNA is really, really core. Cool. Now, have we always got that right 100% of the time? Probably not. Show me a company that has. But we've tried very hard to, to learn and adapt in what is a very, very fast-paced sector. So when we talk about AI today, I think a lot of people think of it very much in the chat GBT context. That's what's kind of most people are, are kind of thinking about. But as we know, it can be much more um, iterative than that and much more, we're seeing lots of more smaller um, use cases as well. When I think about AI at Zoom, I think about how artificial intelligence is part of our noise cancelling um, elements um, when you have disruptions in the background uh, of a meeting, for example. Um, we also have functionality which allows you to have transcripts of your meetings created after your meetings if you opt in and give your consent for that to happen. And we also have um, various tools uh, that will enable you to do things like language translation, um, uh, which are also powered by AI as well. So we're seeing some of these big changes um, across the tech sector, but we're also seeing those incremental elements as well, which are producing those, those tiny tweaks that allow people to improve their work day to day. So that's that's how we're thinking about things here. Um, it's an ongoing journey. We had some big announcements at our Zoomtopia conference last week, which I encourage people to look at. But yes, trust has to be part of the DNA of any tech company. And at Zoom, we like to think we lead from the front. And maybe apart from that, also like a, a willingness to accept that it is always kind of a dynamic uh, process, right? Because as you said, which company does get it right like every time in, in, in all respects? And maybe we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be able to dive into that a bit deeper now because um, in, in August, obviously, there was a lot of, a lot of noise, a lot of chatter about uh, your approach to, to AI in, in your platform. And I uh, remember that your CEO, Eric, said um, you will not use customer data uh, for training uh, the AI system. And uh, obviously, there was a lot of noise after that as well. Um, what have you learned from, from the whole process, basically? Yeah, it's 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 a great question, and I think what was fascinating for us as a company is, 
you know, you have these moments when you're in the spotlight and you have to really um, adapt quickly and you have to make sure your approach is very clear to your customers and the wider world at large. And as you say, Eric really led from the front. As a CEO, he was really committed to make sure it was absolutely clear that we um, do not use customer data. Um, we did have an issue, as you mentioned, that there was a, a sort of part of our terms and service that have now been changed, which had created that attention. But we've been absolutely clear in our response that that's, that's not our approach. And that is, is different to um, some other um, companies that are out there. Um, we made a clear commitment to response AI, you know, you can look at that in our terms and conditions. We put out clarificatory blogs so those that wanted to know more could, could know more. And we've also importantly put users in control of their own AI capabilities. So administrators and account owners can use the back end to work out how they want to use AI companion tools in meetings or other parts of our product itself. So we want to put users in the driving seat and that's that's exactly what we've what we've done. Um, you know, our, we've got a kind of unique federated approach to AI and it's designed to deliver some of the results through incorporating some of our own large language models um, in addition to things like Metalama 2, OpenAI and Anthropic. And what we're trying to do, and this goes back to the, really the theme of this conference, is that yes, you have trust at the heart, yes, you have controller and um, user control at our heart, but we have to be evolving and iterating as well. And we, we can never forget that what users can understand and have access to has to be heart of that. Exciting. Um, if I if I remember correctly, because I've uh, talked to Josh like in in exactly this kind of format in yes. last year's uh, Bitcoin Privacy Conference, and of course um, the EU uh, privacy framework and the EU legislation uh, play play a large role for for every company. Um, but you, of course, also. And he mentioned there was a, a project or some kind of developments uh, going on with the Dutch uh, DPA. Um, can you like update us on that a bit? Yeah, it's it's a piece of work that um, we're really really proud of as a company. So um, some of your viewers might be familiar with uh, Surf, which is a, a Dutch authority that does a lot of work with um, large technology companies across the globe. And we want to take a really proactive um, partnership approach to working through um, some of those. Um, you know, it's partly perception and partly reality, but things around um, how certain elements are perceived when it comes to data protection. So we wanted to work closely with them, get our experts in a room with their expert and really work through and thrash out what it is um, that, they, that we can um, provide clarity on. Um, how, can we, how can we go into that? So we have an ongoing partnership. You can read blogs on our website about it. Um, we're really, really excited about it. It's a sort of real exemplar, hopefully, of how companies can do this, that these sorts of things, right? Having agreements and working hand in hand. So um, when it comes to European customers in that relationship, we talk a lot with them about data storage and European economic area. That won't surprise you. Um, uh, we talk about uh, how our Europe support team works. And we also talk about increased user control um, over their data. Um, I can talk more about that, but I think what's, what's really important is we have a plan and we work on, and as we have new innovations, whether it's our AI innovations or other aspects, we work in partnership with them. And it's helpful to us as a company to really um, kind of test that the approach we're doing not only works for our privacy by design approach, but also works um, for a really highly esteemed um, organization like SURF as well. Fascinating, especially um, that you're mentioning uh, privacy by, by design also, um, because there has been, of course, one, one of the topics that we have been uh, talking about today, yesterday, and, and of course, all the time. Um, maybe we can just go a bit deeper in, into that area because um, how is the collaboration and the cooperation that you have with SURF, <laughs> I think it's a great acronym, um, how, how, is that, how is that working? Is it like a collaborate, yeah, like a collaboration where you develop new, new ideas, new systems that are scalable through the Zoom system, but also can be adapted by, by other companies? So how, how does it really work in practice? 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's a partnership where we we will meet regularly. We'll provide updates on on what we're working on, um, provide you know show a bit of what's going on under the bonnet um, in a way that I think doesn't always happen. Um, bringing in our experts, we were also having conversations about about uh, functionality and intentions before before things go live, even in some cases. So we're really thinking about we're not just releasing it to the world and then seeing does that work for you or not but but trying to really um you know work with them on on the sort of broad broad things that we're thinking about ahead of time and that you know we're really positive about i mean you have to ask surf what they think but we're very positive about it and they you know um after the um example you mentioned in august around um our ceo eric Wan's comments and and the um focus that there was on um Zoom not using uh, customer data to train AI. Um, you know, we we caught up with Surf. They issued a, a a statement to their audiences, which you can see on their site, that said, you know, they have confidence in our approach. And that's those are the kind of things where actually you can't just you know flick a switch and make that happen. That's a result of deep partnerships, trust between teams, um, and you know working on that over time. So yeah, it's it's a you know it's a model I think we're very proud of, and uh, we hope to see continue. That really sounds um, excellent and like a true collaboration. I think it is it is a model that will be adopted by by more companies and hopefully more authorities as well. Because we so often like find that all oh, those technology uh, technological advancements they they are dynamic and they will always stay that way, right? So you will you basically will never be able to say okay now I'm a hundred percent compliant and everything is fine because it's never changing environment so I think your yeah. approach is, is really excellent I think I think you're right and you know we see things like whether it's um, obviously the AI Act which is being hotly debated uh, in Brussels and you know Germany and across Europe at the moment I mean you know this will come it's looking at technology at a point in time you know we it is always going to be difficult for regulation legislation to to sort of keep up and we know that we have um you know there is a desire to do that and to be nimble but what happens with i think with these kind of conversations is is it allows for really constructive relationships and in in, in in the sort of gaps i guess as, as we're we're talking through um innovations in in real time hmm. yeah amazing and can you maybe tell us a bit more about the the strategic developments that you are planning, uh, especially for, for the German market, but uh, feel free to, to share uh, on a global scale as well, because obviously you are uh, a platform that is used uh, around the globe. Um, but I am, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm, I'm getting that there is more going on in, in the German market right now. So maybe, I don't know, are there new products uh, that are going to be launched? Um, is there a new, like also a new approach to, continuing the dialogue with, with customers here, with authorities, so what, what is the strategy? Yeah, great question. I actually just recently returned from um, spending a few days in Berlin. And uh, even though we're at Zoom, there's sometimes nothing like getting, getting there in, in person. And even, even we acknowledge that. Um, and I'm sure many of you will know uh, Lena and Tobias and Andy and some of the, the key folks in our, in our Germany team. Look, Germany is such an important um, market to Zoom. We're really, really proud of the growing um, the growing presence we have. Um, you know, we know Germany is the largest economy in Europe. We know we have political leaders that understand the potential of, of hybrid work so that um, the economic redistributive effects and, and other aspects besides. So we're really proud. Um, and we're also proud that we have German innovation at the heart of Zoom's technology. So you might be aware that we have um, an innovation hub in Karlsruhe, uh, which opened this summer. Um, we have a fantastic uh, German engineering team led by the brilliant Dr. Stuka, um, who's driving a lot of our language recognition and translation capabilities, um, which we're really, really proud of. And that, that stuff is at the heart of our AI companion um, uh, product as well, which which we're delighted by. And that, that came hot off the heels of um, our acquisition of the German company Kites uh, recently as well. Um, we also have a, uh, you know, a, 
a really valued partnership with Deutsche Telekom. Uh, we offer a product with them called Zoom X, uh, and it's deliberately tailored to the needs of the German market, particularly thinking about the public sector. And we really went about that because we were listening to our German customers, we were listening to their needs, we were listening to um, what, what it what were the things that they would need, the high requirements around data privacy, around regional data privacy laws. And, um, you know, we worked on this partnership, we made it happen and, and we're really, we're really pleased with it. Um, you know, there are other examples as well. I mean, you know, obviously in Germany, it is a, um, a, 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 a fast paced, constantly moving um, landscape with the work of um, your data protection uh, authorities and so forth. And we really pride ourselves on some of that work. You know, we, we for example, are very honored that we were the first video conferencing platform that received the approval of the GPA in, 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 in North uh, Rhineland Westfalen, NRW. And that's the local communal auditing for that region. And that's allowing, by being the first first recognized video conferencing provider that allows their municipalities uh, to use Zoom for virtual and hybrid meetings. So again, we're hugely proud. I could go on and on and on about the different German examples we have going on, but there's just three for you. And uh, we, we really hope that will continue. It's, it's really excellent to see that you're navigating the very complex uh, German uh, data protection authority and data protection regulation framework so, so successfully. Um, one one last question. It might be kind of tricky. I don't know, but what about like data residency? Because we all know there's the DPF that is in place now, but I I always see that there's still a lot of data res residency discussion uh, going on. How are you addressing uh, that at Zoom? On do, do you think the discussion has changed since uh, the the DPF entered into force this summer? Yeah, it's it's a really good question, and again, it's you know this is the theme of the conference. Like things are changing often, and they're changing in lots of different areas in lots of different ways. So, um, you know, as as a responsible um, company that, that that really you know looks at the needs of our customers, that's balancing a whole series of different considerations. I think prioritization is a really is a really key word for us, and. Um, you know, we're not a big player compared to some of the big guys, uh, and you know, we are we are growing, and we're we're proud of of what we've achieved, uh, and you know, we we have to constantly be looking at what we can offer and what how we do things differently. And, and I sort of mentioned the Zoom X example of that. We uh, launched uh, our German data center a few years ago. And um, that's that's why we kind of do the work with experts like Surf, who are the leading um, Dutch education uh, authority. So, um, you know, we have the the data storage in, in the EEA. We have um, a, you know a dedicated European support team. We have increased user control over their data. Um, we are. Um, you know, constantly looking at the, uh, you know, the environment around the data privacy framework and are, um, you know, very supportive of the efforts of that framework. Um, so uh, in short, it's a constantly evolving landscape. Um, and we, you have to listen to your customers. You have to make those decisions around what's going on in the market, how we can best deliver the Zoom product at scale, at pace, safely and securely. Um, you know, Zoom was previously certified under the Privacy Shield. Uh, we're in the process of recertifying with the, the DPF now as well. And uh, yeah, it's, it's an evolving landscape, but we're, um, you know, we, we want to continue that, that commitment um, to, to, to give users what they need in Europe. Wonderful. Charlotte, thank you so much for um, all these insights and for really like talking us through what, what is happening at, at Zoom, what you're doing, um, especially like strategically in, in, in the German market, but also how you are tackling all the different uh, privacy issues. Um, yeah, they are always going on, as you said, it's quite a dynamic, uh, complex system. So thank you for sharing and yeah. Best greetings to the whole team and thanks for making this conference possible today. Thanks so much. I wish you a very successful rest of the conference and uh, it's, we're always delighted to support. So thank you for what you do. It's really important. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.